before us, a sprawling city at night stretching far into the horizon. A city like yours, where people live and work and dream of the future. Here in this melting pot of mixed emotions and fears, a war takes place every moment of the day and night. A war between the criminal and law enforcer. A desperate struggle to maintain peace during the growing years. A war that starts with a crime and begins with an arrest. The struggle continues with no end in sight. A crime is reported and, if possible, an arrest is made. And with the sound of handcuffs clicking, we know the more difficult battle will soon begin at police station. Well, thanks for the information. We'll send one of our men right over. All right, just wait a minute. Now look, don't worry. No one will know. Well, thank you. Take this to Abramson. An informant just uh, notified us as to the location of one of the boys that was involved in that gang war last night. All right, Sarge. Right away. That's right, Captain. Yeah. <laughs> you could have fooled me. <laughs> All right, sir. All right. Sam, the Sarge wants you to follow up a lead in that gang war. Hey, Pat. What do you know? Right down to the room number, huh? <clears throat> Shall I drive? If you don't mind, I'll drive. I'd like to get there in one piece. I'd be careful if I were you two. You know, those kids weren't using pea shooters last night, but zip guns and 22s. Uh, well, if there's trouble, I'll duck. Me too. Behind what? Boulder Dam? <laughs> oh, very funny. Oh, brother. <laughs> Sergeant, we're going out on that pickup now. Is there anything you want us to check first? Just take care of yourself. One of those lunatic kids would just as soon shoot you as play checkers. Uh, we handled them before. We'll be okay. All right, just so long as I don't have to read about you in the newspaper. I will see you later. Sir. All right. Didn't he know we were just a couple of publicity hounds? Minna! Brought an old friend over to see you, Sarge. Minna, how are you? Fine, Sergeant White. It's been a long, long time. It certainly has been. Let's see, the last time I saw you, I think, was uh, that embezzlement job over at the Waldo Studios. That's right. Well, how'd you ever beat the rap? Ha! You've got me confused with somebody else. I got 18 months. <laughs> I guess I had. What are the charges, Chuck? Oh, 559, the charity bit. I arrested our friend Minna off in the corner of Smith and Water, as usual, Biff. Minna, you'll never learn. Isn't that the truth? <laughs> All right, Chuck, take it back. Right. Sergeant White, when you get a break, you come on back. We'll talk over the old days. I promise. <laughs> Yes, by these wings, you'll be known. You'll be recognized throughout the world as one of America's Knights of the Sky, an Air Force pilot. If you are single, between 19 and 26 and a half, you can join this chosen few. You'll train as an aviation cadet and graduate a lieutenant, earning more than $5,000 a year. Win silver wings to a golden tier. Fly with the aviation cadets. Making a trail in the sky, riding the gale way up high. We fly the jet on the Air Force team, the sky cadets, with wings a gleam. Sign up today, go the Air Force way, go up with the aviation cadets. See your nearest Air Force recruiter now. Who 
is it? The police. Open the door. Turn around, boy. Look. Put your hands against the wall. Well, that's it. Okay, sit down. What's your name, son? Hey, what do you want to know for? I... Look, I didn't, I didn't do anything. Answer the man, son. What's your name? It's Roy. Roy Brandt. Where were you last night, Roy? Nowhere. I wasn't anywhere. You were identified as one of the boys who was involved in a teenage gang war in Simpson Alley. Oh, you're crazy. I've never been on Simpson Alley in my life. You're lying, Roy. We know it, and you know we know it. Now sit down. Did you know two 16-year-old boys were killed last night? Look, all I know is what I read in the newspapers. What newspaper? Well, I don't know. The, uh, the, the Times, I guess. Oh, last night's Times. Yeah, yeah, last night's Times. Well, last night's newspapers didn't carry the story. Well, uh, well, then it must have been this morning's papers. Yeah, that's right, it was this morning's papers. How long have you lived here, Roy? A few months. Well, your landlady says you moved in late last night. Oh, come on, she's lying. Well, why should she lie? Well, how should I know? You belong to the Devil's Boys or the Bloodhounds. What are they? Two social clubs that decided to have a gang war last night. No. We got witnesses, Roy, reliable witnesses. And you're, you're lying. Come on, Roy. Let's act like grown-up people. Would we have been able to find you if we didn't have a witness? Look, I, I didn't kill anybody. They say you did. Who did it, Roy? Bunny Lemel? I, I can't say. They'd kill me. We have like a... A cold. I know. What kind of a cold can you bums have when we were able to find you within 24 hours? Can I have a smoke? No. Why not, Sam? Let the kid have a cigarette. for something someone else did. Now, who's the president of your social club? Look up. Oh, it's, it's Bunny Lennel. Where can we find him? Oh, look, that I Where can we find him? Sportsman's. Well, that's the pool hall down on Urban Street. Yeah. OK. Let's go. Where to? The Sportsman's. Sarge just heard from Mrs. Johansson. Her daughter returned last night, and they've called off the search. Where was she? She looped. She's 15 years old. And mature, too. 15 years old? That's a little young for a girl to get married. All right, now, how old were you the first time you got married? Never married. I can't understand it with all your charm. Oh, stop pulling my leg. I have all the charm of a con artist and the good looks of a giraffe. You underestimate yourself, Minna. I do not. You do. What now? Well, you might take the trouble to say you're guilty. Of what? Collecting money for the wrong charity. Oh, no, sir. I was collecting for a legitimate charity. The old folks of this charity. That's what's wrong. I don't understand. You being all those old folks. Oh, no, you're wrong, detective. I'm working for a company that's in the business of collecting money for charities. Now, you're lying, Minna. Aren't I checking? 
There'd be a lot less trouble if you told the truth. Would I lie to you? Yes. White, you never look better in your life. Oh, I feel fine, Minna. I just took a few minute break so I can catch up on your career. How's it been for you? Oh, not good. It's not like it used to be. Tough making a living today. You know who you had in here last week that used to be Minna's boyfriend, Chuck? No, who's that? Remember George Peters? Oh, yeah, the embezzler. Oh, that's a cruel way to put it. Why, he's one of the best men on the street. He'd have you mortgaging your children to invest in one of his crazy schemes. Where is he now? Judge Briscoe set him up for two years. Why? What could he have done to give him such a long stretch? What was the charge, Chuck? Oh, he was promoting funds for some huge new playground like Disneyland. Well, that sounds legit enough. Well, not really. You see, this project consisted of a swing and a seesaw set in the middle of a swamp. Good old George, there's no one like him. Unfortunately, there are too many. Oh, you're wrong, Sergeant White. Believe me, I know. I mix and mingle with the best of them, those that's left anyway. You know, it's different today. Believe me, the kids coming into the business today, well, they're different. They've got some of the craziest ideas in their heads. <laughs> Friends, Roy. Eleven precinct. What can I do for you, cop? Where were you between eight and nine o'clock last night? I was here playing pool. We know different. I don't care what you heard. I was here, like I said. You're president of the Bloodhounds, aren't you? Bloodhounds are dogs, aren't they? Now, don't be cute, bunny boy. Look, I told you where I was. So why don't you just take a fly and leap and let me be, huh? Look, last night, last night, two teenage kids were killed in a gang war. Now, we know for a fact that you were heading one of the teenage armies. We also know for a fact that you were the one that had the zip gun. Roy, did you think I'm me? No, buddy. These guys just picked me up. I didn't say anything, honest. You're changing your story, aren't you, Roy? Did you, did you, Roy? No, buddy, I didn't say anything. Come on, buddy. Let's go. Where do you think you're taking me, fat man? To the station. Let's go. You put your hands on me again, and I'll bust you wide open. Will you now? Pat, we've got another tough boy on our hands. Tough enough. Look, Bunny, just calm down, and everybody will have no trouble at all, huh? Come on, let's go. Sir, hands off! My arm! Look, I told you not to try and pull anything, Bunny. Now, if you come down to the station house peacefully, I'll let you up. But if you try and pull anything more, I'm really going to turn the screws on. All right? All right, all right! Roll up your sleeves. Pull him up, come on. Put your hands back here. I told you I don't know anything about last night. We'll see. We'll see. All right, let's go. When Judy Katie makes a 
is seen. She wears a smile brush three ways clean. Cleaner breath, cleaner face, cleaner teeth. Three ways clean is Colgate clean. When handsome Harry joins the session, he makes a real cool three way impression. Cleaner breath, cleaner taste, cleaner teeth. Three ways clean is Colgate clean. In your mouth, trouble can start with craft food particles that attract decay bacteria, producing decay acids. Colgate with activated Gardol foams as you brush, helps foam away food, decay bacteria, and decay acids. Regular Colgate brushing for most people instantly helps stop bad breath that starts in the mouth. I had the Colgate girl and boy. Brush three ways clean to both enjoy. Cleaner breath, cleaner taste, cleaner teeth. Three ways clean is Colgate clean. Help fight decay with Colgate. Three ways clean is Colgate clean. Sarge, that Murphy A and B has been put away for the night. Well, keep my eyes. He couldn't mean trouble. You think he's psycho? Well, in Section 8, that's been walking the streets. <laughs> Sergeant, here we have two of our happy warriors. Roy Brandt, age 20, and Arthur Lentil, age 20, also known as Bunny. Bunny? Well, that's quite a nickname. Who asked you? Oh, I see we have a tough bunny in our midst, don't we? <laughs> Very tough, Sarge. So tough he scares himself. Well, I see here uh, these two boys are working on suspicion of murder. Right. From all we can gather, Sarge, one of these boys, or both of them, used the gun. No! No what? Nothing, nothing. Take them back. The parents are to be contacted and brought down here. The juvenile authorities are to be notified. This way, boys. Come on, sir. Over to your left, sir. Why are those two boys here? Well, they're here under suspicion of murder. There was a teenage war last night and two 16-year-old boys were killed. That's awful, isn't it? That's putting it mildly, Minna. Chuck? Yes, Minna? About what you said before, about me getting out of the business and retiring. Maybe I could. Well, it would certainly relieve a lot of your worried friends down here. If I promise, will you release me? Minna, I don't have a great deal of evidence against you. And certainly, your good friend Sergeant White would like nothing better. I promise. All right, now, Minna, but let me tell you just one thing. If you ever cause us to bring you in here again for making fun of the law, you're going to be put away for good. I promise. You go home, Minna. Now? Yep, right now. Detective Mitchell, you're an angel. I don't know how to thank you. Yes, I do. Good luck, Minna. Thanks. I just will you keep an eye on our friend over here while Sam and I talk to Roy. Sit down, boy. Okay, Roy, let's have the full story. What do you mean? What happened last night when the two gangs met? There had been some trouble brewing between us. And... We thought it'd be time to settle it. 
A couple of 16-year-old boys were killed. Is this what you consider settling things? Oh, look, we, we didn't know that was going to happen. I mean, it was an accident. It was an accident that somebody raised a gun, aimed it, and fired it. Now, come on, Roy. Let's save ourselves a lot of trouble. Who fired those shots? I, I, I can't. Roy. You know what's going to happen to the boy that killed those other gang members? Well, I, I can guess. Now, whose gun was it? And don't get scared. Nobody's going to get near you. It was bunnies. Then he fired the shots that killed the two. Well, look, no, I, I'm not positive. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was Bunny. Okay, Roy, get up. Oh. What, what are you gonna do to me? Come with me. See, funny. I want to stand. I said, take a seat. You're in a lot of trouble, Bunny. Yeah, sure. I wouldn't be so flippant if I was you. What do you want me to do? Start crying? If I was in your position, I'd start worrying a lot. What position? Murder. Murder? You don't have to kill us, Bunny. We know. Right now, we'd like to have you save us some time. Make a statement. A statement for what? Oh. How you killed those two boys? I didn't kill nobody! Wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. He did... Did he tell you I killed them guys? You learn slowly, don't you? He's a liar. He's a liar! I never killed nobody in my life! Well, if you didn't, who did? He did! Roy did. Oh, don't be stupid. That kid out there wouldn't kill a fly. You're crazy. He did it with my gun. So it was your gun. Yeah, 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 sure it was. But I gave it to him to use. I swear to you, on my life, I, I never used that gun last night. Sam, do you believe him? Why should I? What one thing has he done since we picked him up that indicates we should believe anything he says? Look, Detective Green, maybe I'm no lily white rose, but, but I never killed nobody. Look, I even tried to take it away from him, but, but, but he went crazy. And instead of aiming over their heads to scare him like we always do, he aimed to kill them. I swear it. Well, let's see which one of our lily white roses is telling the truth. Okay. I just... Would you bring Roy Brandt in here, please? Listen, Roy. Why did you tell him I killed them guys? Look, I got 20 witnesses that'll say he did it. 20! Is that true? No, no, he, he did it. He's a liar! He's a liar! He's a Please. Please. Oh, don't do this to me. He did it. Let me get to a telephone. Please, let me call the bloodhounds. They'll swear to it. Sit down. You did it, Roy, didn't you?
from you. A crumpet right out of the bloodhound. Okay, boys, let's go. Where? To jail. Where else? Uh, how'd you just do me a favor, will you? Sure, Pat. Call my wife and tell her I'll be home late again. <laughs> okay. My dentures never look this clean with toothpaste. I don't worry about my breath anymore. They're reporting a new Polydent, now with active oxygen, an amazing denture cleanser. In solution, active oxygen soaks deep where toothpaste can't reach to clean bacteria away, clean food away, clean film and stains away. Dentists surveyed recommend Polydent 9 to 1 over any toothpaste. Polydent cleans dentures best, stops embarrassing denture breath. You have been in Precinct 11, police station. The cases have been real, taken from actual incidents. And now, the results of those cases reenacted on tonight's police station. The case of Minna Alton, arrested for illicit solicitation of charity funds. Approximately four weeks after the arrest, Miss Alton was arrested for petty theft, violation of code 116. She is now serving a six-month jail term in the county jail. The case of Arthur Lentil, arraigned on charges of assault and battery. Arthur was sentenced to a one-year suspended term along with his fellow bloodhound gang members. The case of Roy Brandt, homicide. Appearing before Judge O'Hanlon, Superior Court, Roy Brandt was sentenced to a 10 to 20-year term at state prison. He is currently serving that term.